most parents are expecting, you know, when you send your kid to school, you got to have them vaccinated for measles, for sure. tetanus, for chickenpox. A lot of these migrant students are not being required to get those vaccines, at least not right away. Um, and, you know, so the city is kind of, you know, doing their best to handle it, it seems, but it seems like it's a pretty serious crisis for them. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by education reporter Jeremiah Poff. Jeremiah, it's back to school. What are the big issues? I mean, New York City has had this influx of migrants. How did that affect the return to school? New York City public schools started um, and they're having to deal with 19,000 new students from these migrant that have come from the southern border. Many Mm -hmm. of them have been bussed by a a lot of these uh, red state governors like Greg Abbott in Texas. And so New York City Mayor Eric Adams and the city public school system have have kind of grappled with how to deal with this massive increase in students, um, many of whom uh, they're they're not really equipped to to fit all these students right away. So they've kind of, it's kind of been like a work in progress so far. They've had some hiccups over vaccinations for some students. Many of, you know, most parents are expecting, you know, when you send your kid to school, you gotta have them vaccinated for measles, for sure. tetanus, for chickenpox. A lot of these migrant students are not being required to get those vaccines, at least not right away. Um, and, you know, so the city is kind of, you know, doing their best to handle it, it seems, but it seems like it's a pretty serious crisis for them. So there's got to be then some concern that you could have an outbreak of, of some infectious disease that children are generally immunized against. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly a concern um, that, again, the city the city says that, the, you know, they're eventually going to get immunized against these diseases. But in, in the meantime, you know, you, you raise a lot of questions, especially because there's been certainly reports of diseases among migrants that, you know, most people in, in the United States haven't have been immunized against. So testing is a big issue as is, is in testing the students uh, in Massachusetts and the teachers unions taking a position on that. Talk a little bit about what's going on there. Yeah, so th- there's a, an attempt right now in Massachusetts to end a graduation requirement for standardized testing. So mm-hmm. there's the MCAS test, right. which students, high school students have to pass in order to graduate. Uh, and, and so the teachers union, the Massachusetts uh, teachers union there, they're, 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 they're backing a ballot initiative that would remove that requirement. So um, the attorney general of Massachusetts just approved the, the ballot initiative. So now they, they're going to move tor- towards collecting signatures with an eye to getting, on the ballot, getting it on the ballot in 2024. I mean, the teachers unions have long complained about some of these testings, uh, test requirements because they say they're just teaching to the test. But a lot of other people say that it's important to have some kind of standards to show that uh, educational performance is where it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. And so what you're seeing is a lot of the teachers unions typically, uh, their complaint typically with, with these standardized tests is that they have racially imbalanced results. Sure. So, you know, racially disparate outcomes is, is something that they, they, they feel very strongly about and think that is a reason to get rid of the tests. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of concerns that if you get rid of the tests, then you're not going to have account, you're not going to have a, a viable measure of accountability for right. how the schools are doing and how the students are doing, and by extension, how good the teachers are working doing. So there's another issue that's hitting the ballot, maybe less to the teachers union's liking, and that's school choice. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so in, 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 in the last year, about a year and a half, we've seen a, 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 a wave of school choice legislation get passed at the state level. Uh, we've seen Iowa, you've seen Arizona, Nebraska, Arkansas, t- um, Florida. They pass these universal school choice programs. Mm-hmm. And, and so a lot of the, t- the teachers unions and their allies are kind of are, are not happy about it, sure. and they've been looking toward means to get re- to, to repeal them, especially in these states where they the Democrats really don't have a lot of electoral power. Um, in Arizona, it's a little different; they have a divided government there. But they attempted last year to force a ballot initiative uh, about referendum on the issue of, of universal school choice there, but came up short. Uh, they didn't collect en- enough signatures, so they failed there. Similar story happened in Arkansas. In Nebraska, it seems like they're having a little bit more success at, at forcing a, a, a referendum on a, on a school choice program there. So we'll see how that goes plays out in the next year or so. Apples for the teachers unions. Thank you, <laughs> Jeremiah.
You can read Jeremiah and the rest of our policy team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.